The following is an Ice on Mars presentation. It's time to revisit the Disney classic ish. 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 Pocahontas and young Pocahontas today. What the fuck? Um. Hey everybody, this is Michael T. Bradley. This is Marisha Parker. And we are here to talk about two separate films, both available on YouTube, and both uh, reimaginings of the Disney film Pocahontas, or, well, I, I guess reimaginings of the real events that took place at the end of the 16th century, beginning of the 17th century, in the new world of the Americas. Quite imaginative, I'd say. On, <laughs> on all three counts, but these two in particular are just... Oh, dear. And I stupidly chose both of these because, A, they're both pretty short, uh, neither are really close to an hour long, and B, because since one was called Young Pocahontas, I thought it would be completely different and separate adventures, but instead they really just both end up being the same retelling of that Pocahontas tale, the whole John Smith Pocahontas friendship slash love interest. It's never really, I don't think it's anything more than friendship in either of these, would you say? Yeah, there's one moment in Young Pocahontas where it implies, like, just that there might be a little bit more, and that's about it. It's, it's the story of Indians and white folk uh, making friends and building bridges on both counts, and that's really, I think, all the plot synopsis we need. Let's go to our what the fuck moments. Marisha, would you like to start us out? Yes. Lyrics from Pocahontas singing to herself, birds sing, the sky is blue, everything I know is true. <laughs> Could it be possible everything's true? In Pocahontas, and to be fair, these weren't made by the same studio or anything, but they both were in response to the Disney movie coming out. In Pocahontas, she is younger than in young Pocahontas. Apparently, possums can outrun bullets. Ah, oh, thank goodness. They all speak English. At the beginning of Pocahontas, there is an eerily quiet roller coaster ride into the land of stories and fairy tales, and it's a little fun. bit disturbing. And, uh, it's yeah, supposed fun. to be fun. The line, I won't have it said an Englishman started a war on this soil. <laughs> And apparently a little girl can claim ownership over another human being. And John Smith, Prometheus to the Indians. So let's first talk about young Pocahontas, uh, in which Pocahontas is older than in Pocahontas. This one was uh, shorter, um, I would say obviously aimed at a younger demographic overall, don't you think? Yes, but also unfortunately, like, less budget and just worse writing, which really shouldn't be possible, but is anyway. I actually kind of enjoyed the writing in this. Like, for instance, when the chief asks about the white men, was their canoe bigger than my canoe? <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the Both the chief and the medicine man, they like they both wanted to be scarier and, and uh, prettier, essentially, than, than the white people. And since they weren't, they wanted to start a war. But in terms of the writing, too, they're interrogating this prisoner who is essentially a prisoner of war, and the chief asks him, then you are not bad? <laughs> well, I mean, it's a fair question, Marisha. He's a, he's a prisoner. They're scared of war. I mean, both of these kind of hinge around the conceit that both sides are scared of the other side attacking them, and they might act badly and begin hostilities, but of course it never happens, which... Whew, Thankfully, in history, that's also true. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the medicine man in Young Pocahontas was, it, it was like Dick Cheney as played by Alan Cumming. So this one follows the kind of uh, familiar Disney formula, at least in the sense of all the animals talk, and Pocahontas has essentially an entire forest of animal sidekicks at her disposal. Including this bear that is creepy, really, really creepy. It's got... The voice of, like, an old smoker who, like, yanks her around by her wrists and, like, guides her through the forest, telling her that the forest is not, in fact, full of evil spirits. But, oh, that bear is creepy. My first note is, Honey the chain-smoking bear is trying a little too hard to be my friend. <laughs> yep, that sounds about right. There are a couple of things in here that I thought 
might be a little misleading to children watching it. A couple of morals that might be bad to take away because essentially the moral of the whole story is kids. You should always trust strangers who say they want to be your friends and wildlife, including bears. Yes, bears who, who would rather steal all your honey, which has been previously used to like drip on someone like it was just everything with the bear was creepy i just it was all it was all just a little unnerving she was really fucking up that bee ecosystem through that entire movie it was also like oh true. everything's a perfect circle of life fuck the bees though <laughs> fuck them they are my slaves and that is it marisha little safety tip do not try to befriend a bear okay thank you for that i i needed that because just in case Captain Smith also has animal sidekicks. He has a cat, a parrot. And, th and that was one of his character traits in this one is that he loved animals. Like he was an animal lover. And that's how Pocahontas knew that he was a good guy is because he actually I noticed. OK, so in young Pocahontas, a bird falls and is like yeah. dead and he, he essentially resurrects it, which is awesome. And in the second movie that we watched, the other Pocahontas movie, a bird falls and Pocahontas rescues it and brings it back to life. And so I, th I thought that was an interesting parallel. It was. I, I noted the uh, dead bird <laughs> resurrection mirroring each other as well. Though then it takes a darker turn in Good Times as Pocahontas because at the end of Young Pocahontas, essentially all of the animal creatures come in and in a very Home Alone style protect both, I, I, I can't remember, it's the Indians versus the, yeah, Indians versus the forest animals. The forest animals make it so that they can't spring their ambush, and so hostilities never begin, and then they end up being friends. In the Good Times Pocahontas version, the way that they become friends is because this outcast Indian tribe murders all the animals and <laughs> shares them. And so I was like, oh god, they got Honey the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Which I have max mixed feelings about. So the thing that brought them together in, in the Good Times Pocahontas is that they were all starving to death together. And that was a great way to unite all these people. On the other hand, though, like this group of outcast Indians who, who they what happened was they didn't like the chief of the Powhatan tribe. And so they attacked uh, Englishmen while they were staying in the Indian village. So, you know, not hospitable at all. Like, I, it was it was terribly rude but then they got outcast and there was this whole plot building up that they were going to attack and take over either Jamestown or take over the tribe again but instead in the end since everybody was just starving to death they were just like oh here have some food we're all friends again and that's just like history or something <laughs> I think overall Pocahontas would be proud of this adaptation of her life what do you think I, I I'm not sure I would go that far <laughs> I think the fact that they show, especially in Pocahontas, they show her, uh, they show people in the tribe playing the pale face game. Which was a little weird. Well, they they actually, again, that's another thing they do in both movies. In, the, for, in Young Pocahontas, she puts like white powder on her face to, to mm -hmm. show herself that, that it's not scary to have white skin. And then, no. in, the, and then in the other movie... Yeah, this, I, you this know, has powder I, and I just get so upset at these portrayals of racist oppression. When will the white face jokes end, Marcia? <laughs> when will I know, end? I am so offended. <laughs> Let's play the pale face game. <laughs> I I really liked in Pocahontas how she and her young female friend, like, they have fun with nothing. They are all over the place just like, ooh, look, sticks, yay! Or there's lesbian tension going on. Did you notice the little scene in there that had the... Okay, so the two young girls are playing together, Pocahontas, and I think her friend's name was Niwa or something like that? Sounds anyway, right. Pocahontas says, who am I going to marry? Tell me, oh, powerful shaman or medicine man or whatever, because they're, they're pretending. And the gr other girl looks in the water and is like, oh, you're going to marry this man? I see him in the water. I, I see him, look! And, and it's clearly looking at her own reflection. I honestly thought that was going to be an invitation for John Smith to walk up behind them and we would see his face in the water. But then that doesn't happen. Right. So it was just like unresolved <laughs> romantic tension there. It was weird. It was uh, it was a little odd because she didn't even play the pale face game. She wasn't she wasn't attempting at all there. <laughs> Both of them have 
a little bit of a weird vibe between John Smith and Pocahontas, but both of them portray her as young enough that it comes across as a little weird, though there is that line in the Good Times version where John Smith is basically like, oh, the night sky is almost as beautiful as your daughter, Chief. And it it came across as a little creepy, I thought. I Well, a little bit. I mean, but I feel like that's fairly... It's normal to have romantic tension between them because of the Disney movie, I feel like. Sure, but in the Disney movie, I felt they at least lied about her age and just made her, like, 16, 18, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in these movies, I mean, they never said her age, but she definitely looks pretty young in both of them, I, I think. I looked it up, and A, there's apparently no proof that there was ever a romantic relationship between the two. Yeah. And and B, if you do the math, I, I guess essentially she would have known him between the ages of 12 and uh, I, I think it was either 14 or 16. So mm. uh, so essentially that's kind of the time frame that they knew each other in. But I, w- I was shocked that a, a lot of this actually kind of falls closer to the, uh, the true story. I guess she used to go over to Jamestown and play games with the boys. And so... Oh, that's cute. Yeah, so these are basically just the same thing, except she's playing games with John Smith. And, you know, Smith reported on her saving her life from the chief, but most people think that that's just a bullshit story he made so that she would be more accepted in English society. Hmm. Because Indians don't have sacrificial bones in their body. (laughs) I don't know why it's disbelief. But yeah, so it, it, you know, it taught us a little bit about history. Or something like that. I noticed in in both of these movies, like the the main conflict was that these English settlers were absolutely completely peaceful, and none you know none of them would ever ever encroach onto anybody else's territory ever. And the only conflict was that the Indians were scared of strangers. Like that was the primary conflict, and they, that they were irrationally afraid. That's not necessarily true, though, right? Is isn't it in Young Pocahontas where John Smith is being kept as a uh, captive? And the other guys go in and smuggle him out, and they're ready to go shooting uh, the Indians. Right, but they, I mean, the one guy has a bunch of guns or whatever, but they never actually attack or anything. Like, there, there's no hostility on, on their part. And so it, it just bugged me how the Indians were the bad guys and the white guys were the good guys. Like, the, it just, like, that was the theme through both of the movies, and it just reminded me of how it all got fucked up in the first place like throughout (laughs) history yeah it's i mean sure we're rewriting history so that a indians speak english and b they are very very scared of our powerful stuff that's i thought that was an interesting moment in young pocahontas where the thing that makes her really excited to meet english people is that she's told they have sticks of death (laughs) well that would make me excited about it (laughs) she's like oh wow i really want to talk to him now and i'm like you know, that's that's maybe a thing to get nervous over, but uh, whatever. Fuck that. She is young Pocahontas. She's got Honey the Bear and shit. She don't care. I don't know. I guess it's almost as if history itself is playing the pale face game, would you say? <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's an interesting way to put it. <laughs> You know, uh, Wilford and I have been talking a lot about representation of minority characters. I guess there at least were a lot of Indians in these. (laughs) That's true. They were represented in a way. Yeah, in in a kind of way. I thought young Pocahontas was a little bit worse about uh, giving them that typical kind of like you know, me no see him, white man on. Yeah, um, the way they talked was was definitely in that. But then in the other one, like they they had them like just. Just sitting around, and then they would randomly do the. I can't do the. Uh, aye, 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 like the. They were. Right, they would like aye. make them do the war cry or whatever. Just, just randomly, just when they were just sitting there. Yeah, it's and I'm like I don't even know if that shit's racist, but it's probably I probably wouldn't I'm put sure it in a it movie. Is. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't err on the side of non-racist with that shit. You yeah, know, I just... in any any part in this movie, I all I I wouldn't err on the side of non-racist. <laughs> like there was nothing in here that was. Especially, I think the weirdest part is where John. John Smith is Prometheus to the Indians. He goes around and shows them how to do shit. 
like you know it's like here's a wheel you know and all the young indian maidens are like ooh, ooh and and it's just it's an odd moment and it's this musical interlude that comes out of nowhere it's it's true though that the technology that the white people had was better and that's why they were able to you know demolish entire cultures just at the you know at their own whims so i mean that's that's sort of there like in history okay i right, fair enough the one thing that i did find strange or or i guess intriguing was that in one movie we have that it's the old indians who are scared of losing tradition and losing their own power and they're the ones who kind of cause the struggle whereas in the other one it's the young indians who are the upstarts and they're the ones who want to start a war they don't understand patience and everything yet I don't I don't know what we can learn from that. What was it in the Disney movie? I don't remember. I saw that goddamn thing in the theater and regretted it immediately and I don't remember a thing about it. It well, uh from what I remember in the in the Disney movie, well, first of all, they they actually had the white people be like hostile and actually like try to attack whereas in these movies they didn't. The the Disney version was just written a little better and so it had more realistic like politics and stuff and from what i remember of the disney movie there weren't as many indian characters involved in the co conflict as much there was like the chief and then there was the medicine man and there was like a a warrior and that's pretty much about it i think hmm. but it's better I, than I, than young pocahontas where it was just the chief and the medicine man and the medicine man was just he was just evil and they they found that out eventually yeah evil in a little fay the thing I really like the most about Young Pocahontas, I think, is the fact that it was a musical with songs that lasted between two and four lines each time. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Like, the the line that you quoted, I'm pretty sure that's the entire song, right? It's, <laughs> it's just pretty like, close. Yeah, it's just like, nature's cool and things are green, everything is true, fuck yeah, it's awesome! <laughs> anyway, scene. And it was just like, okay, that, that works for me, like a brief little prelude into the life rather than actual musicals. And that's why I, I think especially in Pocahontas that Prometheus scene sticks out because it randomly turns into like not a musical, but just this musical interlude. I guess I don't remember, like wh which one is the Prometheus scene? Because both of them had like the compass scene where he uh, he offers them the compass and that's that's like the gift and that like that's a cool thing that he has magnets he they've discovered magnets and that's in the good times version there is this section that goes on for like a minute and a half and it's just music and it shows him introducing the indians to different things and I can't oh well he's living in their village yeah and they've got yeah. him captive yeah yeah and, which was uh, after pocahontas has claimed him as like her personal slave or whatever right because that's a thing that they can do i guess <laughs> I just I I was like, she looks like 11, so that, isn't that a little creepy that any 11-year-old could just be like, I claim him. But it was the law of the tribe. I also thought uh, the good times Pocahontas was a little bit like Dances with Wolves, because he goes pretty native. Mm -hmm. I did think it was better than Dances with Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it had that going for it, but I mean, I, I you could say that about damn near any movie. I liked that in Pocahontas, for the people who fell asleep, you got the end song that just recapped everything that had come beforehand. Oh yeah, the one that says, no one knows what's false or true when the old world meets the new. Yes. That was the theme of the song. Allegedly. So if you want your really hardcore historical interpretation, I guess stick with Disney. <laughs> or, or, you know, books. What am books, Marisha? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Me no likey. <laughs> okay, so if you could do one thing to improve either of these movies or both of them, what would that be? I would have brought the creepy bear into the other movie at, at the very end when they were all starving to death and, and had her like do her like honey trick all over them and make it like creepy and and gross but then they all survive through the winter because of the creepy bear i totally thought you were gonna say and then they shoot her they they could do that too and then but then and then she could sing about how there's no no such thing as evil spirits in the world that would be fun just her reanimated corpse <laughs> john smith teaches them taxidermy <laughs> i love animals especially once they're dead
I don't know. I think I would have, you know, I, I, I mean, just because I feel like this shit's already crazy and you're just wanting to make a buck off of people mistaking this VHS tape at the store for the actual Disney one. So I'm like, why not just go batshit, right? I mean, I, I, I'm like, I would have put in an alien invasion. I would have yeah. done hardcore love story between Pocahontas and John Smith. I mean, definitely you know. with the age difference included, make it all exactly. tense yeah. that way. Yeah. Right. I mean, not like insertion shots or whatever, but just have it be <laughs> <Put> close enough. <laughs> But just have it be, like, shockingly weird. I mean, it's like, young Pocahontas, seriously, the moral of the story is trust any stranger, especially if they claim to be your friend and only to, you know, be good people. It's like, there nobody lies, so you're fine. And it's like, if you're going with that as your moral anyway, then, then just go batshit with it just have them like making out and it's like it's totally cool because i'm your friend pocahontas <laughs> don't don't tell your dad though he might get weird about it <laughs> also i'll kill your your cat i say just go nuts with it you know make it uh like uh saints row four or whatever aliens attack halfway through and uh john smith and pocahontas uh, fend that off with their laser muskets or some shit you know that and, does sound like a better version than both yeah, of these movies i say why not yeah all right well if you have nothing else to add then i think i am good as well and we will close the chapter on these I don't want to say terrible imitations because I really hated the Disney movie. So, <laughs> well, yeah, then I guess I guess you're you can't so do that. These these brilliant imitators. <laughs> All right, for now, this is Michael T. Bradley. This is Marisha Parker. Bye bye. You have been listening to Ice on Mars. <laughs>